News. Joining me from outside the debate hall is Ken Cuccinelli. He's the founder of the Never Back Down Super PAC, which, of course, is supporting the Ron DeSantis presidential bid. They, uh, they usually do a lot of the work that puts a lot of the events together that Governor DeSantis shows up at. Mr. Cuccinelli, always good to hear from you. Thanks, Chuck. Good to be with you. Let me start with the infamous debate memo. I don't want to get into litigating whether it should have been made public or not, but it has been made public. And there, I assume you haven't changed your mind at what he should try to accomplish tonight. So one of the decisions you say in this memo is to defend Donald Trump in abstentia in response to a Chris Christie attack. Why do you believe that's an important thing for your candidate to do? Yes, yeah, so since he got in the race, Governor DeSantis has distinguished himself from Trump on issues, whether it's COVID, the wall, economy, Fauci, personnel, the, it's a long list. And that's an appropriate way to make the distinction, to make the attack. The name calling that Trump inspires and undertakes, which we would anticipate, you, you know, you're referencing there would be a response, I think raises and elevates the level of the debate overall. I think if Ron DeSantis is able to do that, he demonstrates how presidential he already is. He's the most successful conservative chief executive governor in our lifetimes. Mark Levin has said things like that. He's a tough, tough, bolt, you know, standard to measure against. And I think that he measures up well. And as Ali just said, it's really Ron DeSantis and everybody else tonight. And he gets to introduce himself for the first time to most Americans without a filter of you and me talking right. about this or that. It's they get to see him for himself. And he has always risen to those occasions. What's your sense of how important, you know, I, I am of two minds on this as a first debate. Traditionally, first debates um, aren't that important. Traditionally, a front runner skips a first debate. Also not surprising. Obviously, this is different because we have a former president running. We haven't had that in our lifetimes, right? Something like that. And of, and of course, all the attention the arraignments get. Do you view this debate as make or break as others uh, are writing it? Oh, no. Ch Chuck, uh, this is a great introduction opportunity for, you know, I've campaigned in a state, as you know, you've interviewed me before in Virginia, and, and there we would say Labor Day is sort of the beginning of the, mm -hmm. of the campaign as traditionally in a state. This is sort of the Labor Day of the presidential race. This is the first time most people will pay attention. All of us paying attention before, we've been building, talking to over a million and a half people at doors at Never Back Down on behalf of Governor DeSantis. But this is really when people start to p tune in, and that's when the movement starts to matter. There was a poll out recently that showed over 50% of people who, when asked, who do you support in the race, still say, uh, yes, they have an answer, but they're ready to move from that person. Over 50%, only 40% who even have a candidate, whether that's DeSantis, right. Trump, or someone else, are ready to stick with their candidate. So it's very early in this process. Governor DeSantis gets to introduce himself right. as the singular leader against the, the woke left, the only veteran running. His tax and de debt right. record are second to none. All things that matter to making a regular American's lives better as right. president when he can you, cast that vision forward. And looking forward right. is a big difference than the other guy not on the stage, Trump, who just loves to look backwards. You know, one of the other things in the memo was hammer Vivek Ramaswamy. Well, you're not the only campaign apparatus that thinks he should be hammer, you know, sort of he's he's suddenly being treated like an IPO stock. Well, you better hit him now before he, he continues to grow. Why do you think Ramaswamy's finding a moment? Uh, well, he's young and has energy, but he's been flip-flopping on so many issues, whether it's aid to Israel or decriminalization of drugs or, critically for Iowa, the death tax at 59%. And his defenses of this stuff are just falling flat. And when you have, you know, a, a, a left-wing media outlet getting backed up by a Megyn Kelly about Vivek's 
flip-flops, you know there's something very real to that. Mm -hmm. And he's a fake, Vivek the fake. And it's better that people know that early yeah. and focus on the two-person race this is and the Republican nomination. All right. If uh, one of these candidates gets a bounce out of this debate, is that a way to measure this debate as a success or not? Uh, I don't I don't know about that. I think that the success for DeSantis is more building on the foundation that already exists for him. He has mm -hmm. incredibly high name ID, the highest favorables in the Republican side. But letting people know the depth of his accomplishment that matters to Floridians lives and as president would matter to every American's lives is really the measure of success. If he gets to make those points tonight, this is going to be a win for him to build and build and build as we turn to the voting in Iowa, New Hampshire and beyond. Ken Cuccinelli, head of the DeSantis Supporting Super PAC, Never Back Down. Uh, appreciate you coming on and sharing your perspective with us. Thank you, sir. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.